O oh God, help us to listen to your word with understanding, to receive it with faith, and to obey it with courage, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The title of this message is Alerting Others to the Kingdom of God. How do we know what the kingdom of God looks like? Have you ever wondered? Well, one way we can find out about the kingdom of God is to read the scripture, to read what God's word tells us about his kingdom. That's one way. Can we see glimpses of the reign of God, the rule of God, the kingdom of God here on earth? Can we see glimpses of that in our daily lives? Do you enjoy watching the trailers for upcoming movies? What are trailers? Well, trailers are tasters or previews of the soon-to-be-released feature, and they usually include the best special effects or the funniest scenes or the most dramatic, uh, dramatic or romantic moments in, a, in the film, depending on the upcoming feature. And at the end of each trailer, if it has done its job, usually one person will turn to another one and say, well, I, I want to see that whole movie. It looks good. And do you know that this is a metaphor for the church? We're all kind of like a movie trailer. And if we do our job well, people will say, well, I want to see the world that they come from. I want to see the, the whole thing. Even though not every believer is a gifted evangelist, as believers, we still need to take seriously our calling to alert others to God's reign and rule on earth. When I say reign, I don't mean R-A-I-N, I mean R-E-I-G-N, God's reign, God's rule on earth. And we may think of God's rule, the kingdom of God, or the coming new creation as the main feature, a massive, glorious blockbuster film. And we're all looking forward to seeing that. And our lives should be like the trailers, the previews, giving people a taste, a glimpse of the full thing. And so what are we to do? Well, Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Missionary theologian Leslie Newbigin, retired bishop of the Anglican Church of South India, put it this way. He said, the church exists for the sake of those who, who are not members. I like that. I'm going to say that again. Think about this. The church exists for the sake of those who are not members. As a sign, instrument, and foretaste, of God's redeeming grace for the whole life of society. And so the church is a sign. And the traditional Anglican church building uses a steeple pointing people to a reality that is right around the corner, the kingship of Jesus and his eminent return. The steeple points to God. That's why it's so noticeable. Whichever direction we're driving outside, we can see the steeple on St. Luke's church. And it points to God. We have a sovereign creator of the universe whom we worship and whom we serve and follow each day of our lives. Now on this Mother's Day, as we think about mothers, mothers are often signs demonstrating God's love to their children. 
Remember Jesus said, people will know you are my disciples if you love one another. Like the movie trailer, the church is where people can get a taste of the future right here in the present, in the here and now. And when the church is a foretaste, we demonstrate what life is like when men and women and children live under the rule and reign of Almighty God in the power of his Holy Spirit. Whenever we gather around a table, whether it is the communion table or the table in our homes, and share food and meaningful conversation, loving one another as Jesus commanded, we demonstrate a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. Have you ever thought about that as you gather around your table at home? And so Mother's Day family gatherings demonstrate a foretaste of God's sovereign rule. We can think about that. Many of you will be gathering around a table a little bit later today with family. A foretaste of the heavenly banquet. And the church is not just a sign and a foretaste, but also an instrument. Like a tool in the hands of God, we are used to help shape God's preferred future for this planet. Are we doing a good job? Well, I guess God is a judge of that. On this Mother's Day, we are reminded that women, whether they are mothers, teachers, God or brownie leaders, or in some other capacity have nurtured children, are instruments of God's grace. Instruments of his grace. And so, what is the reign of God like? And how can our lives be a sign or foretaste? Well, if your life and my life is meant to alert people to God's reign, what are we pointing people to? What do people see when they see the way we live? Do they see God in us? Author N.T. Wright, Tom Wright, a retired Anglican bishop and a New Testament scholar, says the reign of God has four elements. And he talks about those four elements, and they are reconciliation, justice, beauty, and wholeness. Today, given that we are journeying through a pandemic, I want to just talk about one of those, wholeness, how wholeness demonstrates God's reign. When John the Baptist heard from prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to check with him whether he was really the Christ or should he expect someone else. And this was Jesus' message to John's disciple in Matthew's Gospel. Jesus said, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is preached to the poor. Making people whole is an essential element in the kingdom of God. And as we face this COVID-19 pandemic with its restrictions and its protocols, and some have already been vaccinated and others are waiting to be vaccinated, we need to hear this message of hope. Our God is a God of wholeness, not a God of brokenness, a God of wholeness. And on Mother's Day, we are reminded of how mothers convey a message of wholeness in the way they nurture children. Think about that, a mother's gentle touch, a kiss on a hurt elbow, a bandage on a cut knee, a warm embrace, all convey love and help bring wholeness into a child's life. 
the nurturing love of a mother or a mother figure is so important to us that we take a special day each year to acknowledge it. And of course, it is something that we acknowledge in little ways every day of the year. Above all, we acknowledge the love of our Savior who walked this earth and brought wholeness into people's lives. Jesus' miracles were trailers or foretaste of the world to come. Just imagine, in God's reign, there will be no disease or sickness, there will be no COVID-19, there will be no mental illness or depression, there will be no birth defects or scars. We will be remade whole. And it follows that bringing healing and wholeness is a primary way that we alert others to the reign of God. Michael Frost, who wrote Surprise the World, describes it this way. He said, of course, many Christians are committed to bringing healing to the lives of others, doctors, nurses, psychologists, counselors, paramedics, and so on. And I want to encourage these as important expressions of the reign of God. But, he says, I want to go further and say that more than these practical expressions of healing, we should also be praying for supernatural healing in people's lives. Have you ever witnessed a miracle in the life of a person that you know? I have many times. I chatted with someone earlier this morning about a, a miracle that we recently witnessed in someone's life. Supernatural healing comes from Almighty God. Jesus said, I appointed you to go. We Christians, my friends, are the sent ones. We have been sent into our world our workplace, our neighborhood, our school, our bubble, our steady 10 or steady 15, to alert others to the reign of God. It is our role as instruments in God's hands, whether as mothers or mother figures caring for children, or as members of the church reaching out to neighbors who are shut in through this pandemic, we are to bring taste of wholeness, which will fully flower when Christ comes. And if you're wondering, what are some examples of that? Well, I, I gave some this morning in my announcements prior to the service. And just as a reminder, how are we instruments of God in the world today? There are people who delivered flowers to mothers, instruments of God. The Christchurch Cemetery work crew who have volunteered their time and their efforts to help uh, beautify Christchurch Cemetery. Instruments of God. And then we have the live streaming ministry team who have, because of the work that's been being done, have enabled folks at home to be part of our worship this morning. Instruments of God. And so my friends, all of us have a role to play as we're sent out. That dismissal at the end of the service is not simply to say the service is over. We are being sent out into the world to love and serve the Lord. And so we are to bring taste of wholeness into our community, into our neighborhoods, into our families, each and every day of our lives. And one day, those examples those acts of kindness done in the name of Jesus will fully flower when Christ returns. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit of God, work in the lives of your people, drawing each one closer to you and drawing on believers to faith. Help us, especially during these days of the pandemic, to reach out to the people around us with love through acts of kindness or words of encouragement, 
that we may be a sign, a foretaste, an instrument of wholeness, showing others what the kingdom of God looks like. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.